Now let us ponder a little bit more on the Mohr circle. Let us say that I have this is a normal stress axis, this is the shear stress axis sigma x y okay. and let us say I have a circle. Now the centre of the circle is this point and these points represents the extremum normal stresses sigma x x max and sigma x x minimum and this line represents sigma x y max similarly this is sigma x y max okay. and then you add a stress state which was somewhere here okay. that was a stress state that was given to you say this is sigma x x sigma x y and this will be sigma y y comma sigma x y minus. Okay. So, that was a stress state that was given to you that is I have E x E y on this I have a stress element which was sigma x x sigma x y this is also sigma x y and I add this is sigma y y like this. Now I want to represent what happens on this circle when the Kone system rotates by an angle theta. Now this is E x star E y star I have given a anticlockwise rotation of theta. Okay. Now uh, if I write the equation of this circle as x plus x naught whole square plus y square equal to r square and do a transformation x equal to r cos phi and y is r sin phi and if I use 0 to 360 as the domain of phi 0 less than phi less than 2 pi as a domain of this phi then what is x how is phi measured phi is measured in a let us say I have a plane oriented like this okay. the phi is measured I will give two options one is is this phi or is this phi let, let us call as alpha and let us call another angle which is this is alpha phi or beta phi there is a question is alpha phi or beta phi let us see if phi is uh, more than 90 degrees x would have negative value here x has negative value y has positive value so beta is phi so phi is beta okay so basically now what does it mean it means that from this test state I have to rotate by a clockwise angle of beta to reach the x axis that is what this phi means. Similarly here in our problem your x is nothing but sigma x star x star and in that case uh, you add the expression sigma x star x star as sigma x x plus sigma y y by 2 plus sigma x x minus sigma y y by 2 cos 2 theta or this is nothing but r this plus sigma x y sin 2 theta is r cos phi where phi is 2 theta 2 theta is the angle measured clockwise from the plane to another plane. Okay. 
So basically now if I rotate this by angle theta what I should do is from here I have to rotate clockwise by angle 2 theta, theta is the actual rotation so I have to go from this plane to this plane by angle 2 theta to get into the co stress coordinates for E x star E y star. So this will be this point would be sigma x x moves on to this point. So this will be sigma x star x star sigma x star y star and this point would be sigma y star y star minus sigma x star y star ok ok. So that is how you have to construct the Mohr circle ok. So from a given plane you rotate in the clockwise direction by 2 theta if the rotation of the coordinate system is in the anticlockwise direction by an angle theta. The coordinate system rotates in the anticlockwise direction by an angle theta the Mohr circle corresponds to a 2 theta rotation from the plane to the new plane ok. So this will be angle 2 theta rotation there to get into the new stress state ok. So this is how you use the Mohr circle equation to find the stress components in a rotated uh, configuration ok ok. So what we have seen till now is we have seen how to find sigma x s max, sigma x s minimum, sigma x y max ok and how do you represent two uh, stress states on the Mohr circle uh, wherein the coordinate system has been rotated by an angle theta in the anti clockwise sense that is for this uh, if I were to represent uh, uh, sigma x star x star sigma y star y star and sigma x y star uh, it will be like this. This is the stress cube this will be sigma x star x star and this will be sigma x star y star and this will be sigma y star y star ok. So that is how you will represent a cube wherein the coordinate system has been rotated in the anti clockwise sense by an angle theta ok. Next let us look at a practical problem say I have this plate which is subjected to the following stresses. I have say this is 10 MPa and I have a normal stress 5 MPa and I have a shear stress 3 MPa ok and let us say I have a weld here. this plate as this is 3 that is weld ok. I want to ensure that this weld does not fail under this given state of stress ok. The weld does not fail under the given state of stress. So how will the weld fail? The weld will fail by this plates sliding against each other that is a shear stress developing on the surface of the weld is being more than what it can withstand or it can separate out like this wherein the normal stress exceeds a particular limit that the weld can withstand ok. So what I am interested is I am interested in finding the following I am interested in finding the component of stress sigma normal normal to the weld surface I am interested in finding the shear stress tau of n where n is where this is n the normal to the weld surface ok. So how do I find sigma of n? Sigma of n is sigma times n dotted with n sigma transpose times n dotted with n or this is a traction on that face dotted with n ok. Now what is sigma for this? Sigma would be 10, 3, 0, 
थ्री फाइव जीरो 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 राइट आई हैव चोसन दिस एज माई कॉर्नर सिस्टम ई एक्स ई वाई नाउ लेट से दिल्ड मेक्स एन एंगल ऑफ टीटा टीटा इक्वल टू थर्टी डिग्रीज ओके नाउ वॉट इज एन देन आई हैव E x, E y. I have a surface, and I have the normal n. This is normal, and I know that this angle is thirty degrees. Then I will know that this angle would be thirty degrees, and the ends my n. I can write it as. Sin thirty e x plus cos thirty e y, right? Okay. So I represented both the n. I represented both the normal and the stress sensor using the same coordinate system e x e y. Using the same coordinate system e x e y. Okay. So now all that I have to do is do this matrix multiplications. To get the normal stress, that'll be ten, three, three, five, zero, 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 zero into sine thirty, cos thirty, zero dotted with sine thirty, cos thirty, zero. So this will be ten times. Sin thirty plus three times cos thirty, three times sin thirty plus five times cos thirty, zero dotted with sin thirty, cos thirty, and zero, which will give me ten times. Sin square thirty plus five times cos square thirty plus three times three into two cos thirty into sin thirty. Okay, so that will be the normal stress. You can do what this value is, and that will be your normal stress. Now, how do I find the shear stress? That is the question. How do I find the shear stress tau of n? That is the question. I'll give you an expression in three dimensions. Now, tau of n would be a vector which is the normal traction minus sigma times n times n. What I've taken advantage of is the fact that the shear stress will be a vector in the plane of the cube. Okay, shear stress will be a vector. In the plane of the, uh, in the plane which you are, whose normal was n, okay. So there are two components of the shear stress that is possible in the plane. Two orthogonal components are possible to represent the shear stress, okay. And this, this shear stress will be perpendicular to the normal direction. So if I have two vectors which are normal to each other, I can subtract them to get the resultant vector, okay. So basically, that's what I have used here. Now, the magnitude of shear stress would be magnitude of the normal stress squared minus sigma n squared. Okay, this again comes from the fact that the tau is perpendicular to the n. Yeah. Okay. So from this, I can get what is the shear stress in general. Okay. I have found already this. T of n is also something I found in the process. T of n is T of n is this vector. This vector is T of n. That is what we wrote here. T of n is this vector. So I have found that vector also. Okay. So T of n we have found. Sigma n we have found. Now we have to find the shear stress magnitude. Which would be basically ten sine thirty plus 
3 cos 30 the whole square plus 3 sin 30 plus 5 cos 30 whole square that is cheese of n square minus sigma n square was 10 sin square 30 degrees plus 5 cos square 30 degrees plus 3 into 2 into cos 30 into sin 30 the whole square that will be tau of n squared. You can find this, you can do the computations to find what the magnitude of the shear stress is. Okay. Now, one way is to find the normal and shear stresses using the approach that I shown here. The other way is to go here and say that I am rotating this E x by an axis by an by to match with this normal n. Okay. So, the other approach is the other approach is I add this E x E y. Now, what I will do is I will rotate this axis to E x star E y star where this angle would be 90 minus 30 which will be 60 degrees which is what the normal makes with the horizontal axis. Okay, that is the dash of the normal and in this rotated system I will find sigma x star x star and sigma x star y star this will be nothing but sigma of n and this will be nothing but tau of n magnitude of tau of n. Okay. So, you will find that both the approaches lead to the same value. Okay. So, I can use more circle concepts or I can use directly the fact that the normal stress is given by sigma transpose n dotted with n and shear stress is given by this expression to compute the stresses acting along a plane and normal to the plane. Okay. So, that is what you essentially learned in this lecture how to compute the normal stresses acting along a plane given a stress tensor and how do you compute the shear stresses acting along a plane given a stress tensor and what is the maximum value of this normal stress and maximum value of this shear stress in two dimensional case. Okay. We will stop here for today. The next lecture will extend this what we assumed as plane stress to a three dimensional state of stress. Thank you.